you have one year to capitalize. And I think I made the most out of the first year because the next winner comes along and it's the same with every reality TV show. If you think that you're just going to be popular for the next 10 years, forget it. I grew up in Malaysia, moved here to Australia, Melbourne when I was uh, 18. And um, and I started watching MasterChef, I think when when it came on, it was, I got here in 2006 and then it came on in 2009 as the first season. And I have watched it religiously up until season eight. And I thought, and I always thought to myself, oh, you know, because I, I come from a foodie background, like mom and dad love cooking, like just typical Asian ethnic family. Um, and so I've always loved, not, not just cooking, but just love eating, like just love good food. And I always thought, oh, I could do that maybe one day, but I never really had the guts to. And it was only um, when I was, uh, so I was working previously in corporate. I was working at uh, Deloitte and I was there for about four years and all my mates were like, die you gotta apply you gotta apply and I was like oh I don't know maybe and and then I also thought you know what what have I got to lose so it was a little bit of a let's just do it and see how I go kind of thing it wasn't like I didn't plan I didn't plan a whole uh, a great deal um beforehand on like going in I just sort sort of thought like really I'm at a point in my life where what do I have to lose? So that's why I did it. So it was a it was a combination of my love for food and cooking and a combination of let's just do something really t- completely out of the box. Obviously, being on the show, it's incredibly stressful. And I mean, it's like we filmed for seven months. You don't have a phone. And this is not talking about now. Like, I think it's changed a lot since I was on. You don't have a phone. It's alcohol free. You're sharing a room with like, I shared a room with three other uh, girls. And you know, you know what I mean? Like you don't have any freedom as an adult. So was it what I expected? I didn't know what to expect, to be honest. I kind of went in uh, with a very open mind. And and I think that kind of helped me um, because I didn't have high or low expectations. I just went with, let's just go with the flow. Let's see how this turns out. And let's have a good time as much as I can anyway, it, in terms of like how stressful it was. But let's just try and make the most out of it. To be honest, I actually went back to work for six months because um, one, I was quite broke because you're not working, so you're not getting paid. Like it, I took sabbatical leave, and you know, as a I think I was twenty nine then. Like I mean, it's not you know, like you're only living off your savings. Like so, um, you know, you have a lot of bills to pay, and so I actually went back to work. But I found very shortly after, as soon because we finished, say in like at the end of May. And then the announcement was at the end of July. So you have like that three, kind of like the three month period where I just needed to earn money. Um, but then when, when the, you know, when they announced like that I was the winner and like everything started coming in, it was really, really busy. And I really couldn't focus on doing my nine to five job and then having like, you know, I think it was a lot of it was media. A lot of it was like, you know guest appearances like whether it was a talk whether it was like a cooking um, demo creating menus and it because the show is so big as you said like overseas I got a lot of inquiries overseas and because I'm um, Malaysian I actually got a lot of inquiries to go back to like Malaysia and Singapore um, to do a lot of gigs there so yeah it was it was quite hectic and quite mental at that um, the six months after finishing it, it's a funny feeling like it's like someone just handed you like like a check and just go bang cashed in um I didn't know what to do with the money but to be honest I was making a, a decent amount doing other things that I actually put it aside and invested it so um and then you know then it was sort of like I mean I wouldn't say I have it now anymore. This is six years down the track, but like, you know, you use it on different things to, to, to start your career and whatever you want to do. Like um, the money's there and it's not, you know, there's, 
they never say like you have to do this with the money so it's up to you entirely up to you what you want to do amongst doing all the event stuff like which I always thought was cool I did a lot of stuff with um department of foreign affairs um and that was really cool because they were sending me to countries like you know I did stuff with Dubai um I've done stuff with lots of different tourism boards uh, overseas. Um, I've worked in Asia a fair bit, like Indonesia, uh, Myanmar, um, Malaysia, Singapore, um, just to name a few. So, uh, and 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 so that that kind of opens up that door. But I think one of the main things I'm, I was, uh, you know, soon after I, I really want, and I spoke a lot about it on on telly was to have a pop a restaurant, and I didn't want to go into it like, you know, full guns blazing. Like I wanted to see and test if I actually liked that sort of environment. So I had a pop up called Chantin, um, and I did that for eight months so February until I think it was like the end of August or something um in 2018 and that was great and whilst it was great it was actually um I I soon realized that a restaurant wasn't my gem if I was going to do it on my own um which is why I sort of you know I did my pop-up and it was successful and I, I thought you know what I'm just going to take it on the road and I did a lot of pop-up events around the country like the noodle markets and stuff so I did that um then I also had as soon as I finished I worked with uh, uh Mark Moore so Golden Walk to create my dumpling range and that timing was perfect because I couldn't, I couldn't, like a lot of people were like, oh, we want to taste your food, we want to taste your food. But I couldn't obviously have a, an event big enough to have everyone come down and like, you know, like host or taste my, you know, taste my cooking. So with having a dumpling range, that sort of, uh, that was a good timing for me. Um, and, you know, six years on, it's been, it's been going well. It's become, you know, it was really daunting at the start because you just don't know, you're putting your product out there and you're like, you don't know how it's going to be perceived. Um, but it's six years on, it's become a staple in a lot of people's households. People just go to like supermarket and like, you know, a staple of like buying eggs and milk or bread or whatever. Um, dumplings have become their yeah, staple in, in the shopping cart so that makes me very happy and that's probably one of my proudest um you know proudest achievements um yeah and then I I guess the show like I always wanted to do and still do always want I I, I think that's still my goal of like a food and travel show and whilst I didn't get an opportunity to do that I did do a um host my own cooking program on SBS food called Asia Unplated so that went on for two seasons and then I do a lot of like different smaller shows on like channel 10 and stuff so I get a lot of people overseas asking me if they can have the dumplings and while the dumplings are widely stocked available in all supermarkets Australia, across Australia it's not sold overseas so um the company has built a factory in Indonesia and we're going to start supplying to Asia so then we'll start opening up and creating different um, range and pop that into um, the local supermarkets. Yeah. I mean, Asia is huge. Like oh. that's going to be a massive, um, that's going to be a massive project, which, uh, which we're working together. I'm working with them to create um, new lines, new range, and just to test the market to see once again, it's a new market. So we got to see what works and, 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 you know, what will sell, what people want. Um, dumplings might not be it. It might be, I don't know, it might be like bows or it might be, it could be anything, right? Like, so, um, yeah, we're, good. We're, we're testing the market. So it's it's in in, in the process of happening at the moment. Um, I'm, I'm super grateful for what it has given me in terms of the opportunities. Like, it's, it's it, what it does. I always say this, like, MasterChef gives you a platform right? And that platform is wherever and however you want to take it. But the bottom line is it it's never going to just, you have one year to capitalize. And I think I made the most out of the first year because the next winner comes along and it's the same with every reality TV show. If you think that you're just going to be popular for the next 10 years, forget it because the next person will come along. And so my, my goal 
in that year was to make the most of the opportunities that came my way to make the connections, which I carry forward for the next six years. And I still work with the companies and the people that I've worked with in the last six years. So that was my goal. 